Hi there, my name is Jeff Tidball. I run Left Justified Studio, and today I wanted to show you Broken and Beautiful, the game that we're kickstarting now. So, Broken and Beautiful is a snake drafting card game about uh, kintsugi, which is the Japanese art of repairing broken pottery. Now, kintsugi is really interesting philosophically because, generally speaking, what it says is this. Um, objects are great as they're made, but what really makes an object uh, interesting is if someone invests time and intention in repairing it and making it unique. So that's what this game is all about. The fact that you draft things and that's fine, but the things that are the very most valuable to you are the things that you have repaired to make even more interesting and beautiful. So in this game there are nine different kinds of cards, seven different kinds of pottery that you can draft and score, and each one of them scores you points slightly differently. Uh, so cups are the most straightforward piece of pottery. Each cup is worth one point as you draft it and as it sits in front of you. Now, each one of these pieces of pottery in the game can kind of be in three states. So this is its basic state. Now there are some ways in the game that pottery can be broken. When pottery is broken, you turn it sideways, and then uh, not only is it worth nothing, it doesn't help any other pieces that it might be in combination with. So it's once it's broken, it is as though it does not exist. Now there's also ways in the game where you can invest gold in your broken pottery in order to repair them. When you do that, you flip them over, and then they're back in play, they're back helping you again, and usually they are worth even more points than they were before. So for example, this cup is worth three points as soon as you repair it. So that's obviously a huge increase over the value that it had before. So you've got uh, regular pottery as you drafted it, broken makes it worthless, and repaired increases its value again. So uh, that's, how, that's how cups go. Bowls are a second type of pottery. Each bowl that you have is worth a number of points equivalent to the number of bowls that you have. So one bowl by itself, one point. Two bowls together is worth four points because each of them is worth two because that's how many bowls you have. Add a third bowl, now the collection of them is worth nine because three times three obviously is nine. Bowls illustrate how the breakage works in a really nice way. As soon as one of these bowls is broken, this combination is back down to being worth four points because again, if this is broken, it is as though it does not exist in your hand. So now each one of these is worth two again. But if you can repair this bowl, this set is back to 10 now because each one of them is now worth three because you have three of them and this repaired one is worth one more point than it was worth before. If you can manage to get two of them repaired, they are all worth 11, because 3, 3, 3, plus 1, plus 1. So that's the way that bowls work. Uh, plates are a third kind of pottery. Each pair of plates is worth 6 points for the pair. If you can repair a plate, that particular plate is worth 2 extra points. So say you've got these two, uh, that's worth 8 points. A third plate would not help you get more points, because it takes a pair to be worth 6. So that's the way plates work. Uh, saucers work together with cups. The saucer multiplies the value of a cup that you pair it with. So let's say that you've got these two things. The saucer is going to double the value of the cup, so this pair would be worth six. Now if your cup had not been repaired, the pair of them would only be worth two, because one times two. If you repair the saucer, it multiplies the value of the cup by three. So the best thing you can possibly have here is a repaired cup and a repaired saucer, three base times three for the saucer, that's going to get you nine points. So that's the way that saucers work. Tea jars uh, sort of put the players in competition with each other for points. Whoever has the most tea jars is going to be getting six points. Um, that's a friendly tie, so if I've got two tea jars and you've got two tea jars, we're both going to wind up with six points. But let's say I can manage to get one of yours broken, then you're going to uh, fall away from those points and I will get all six. So, a friendly tie, six points for the most. One extra point per tea jar if you manage to break and repair it. Vases, uh, there are only three vases in the deck. Vases worth one point if you've got one. The set is worth 5 points if you have both of them, or 15 points if you have all three. So those increase based on how many you can manage to get. That's a kind of a very straightforward competition. One extra point if you manage to repair it. Teapots 
use the three different kinds of patterns to help figure out how they're going to score. So this one is this brown hairs fur pattern. Let's say that you have got all of this stuff in your collection in the end of the game. This teapot is worth the uh, number of matching pattern cards that you have. So since it's this brown pattern, we just count the number of brown patterns in your hand. So one for the teapot itself, two, three, four, five. So in this case, this teapot would be worth five. If it breaks and repairs, it's worth two times that value, so it would be worth 10. If you get these, you obviously want to keep the things that you were drafting inside that same pattern if you can. Uh, two other non-pottery pieces that you can use to score. There are these serving trays. Those are worth two points. There are storage boxes. Those are worth one point per leftover gold in your uh, collection at the end of the game. Now, the nice thing about these two wooden pieces is that they can't break. There is no mechanism in the game that's going to take these points away from you. So even though they are, uh, they can be lower scoring cards with respect to the others, um, they can't be damaged. You can't be uh, have those points taken away from you. And then the last type of card in the game is gold. This is a way that you can get more gold than you can otherwise get, and I'll show you more about gold as I explain the way drafting works. Uh, but this is something that you don't keep around, this is something that will let you get more gold. So let's talk about how drafting works in Broken and Beautiful. Setting up Broken and Beautiful uh, is extremely easy. There are just two things that you need to do. You need to figure out who's going to be the first player uh, in this, in an example here. Let's assume that that's going to be me. And then everyone who has never played this game before is going to get one piece of gold in order to start. So let's assume just a three-player game so that I can show you how drafting works. Let's assume that the two folks who are playing against me have never played before, so each one of them is going to get one gold in order to start the game. Drafting. Here's how drafting works. Um, you count the number of players, multiply by two, and then add one. That's the number of cards that you're going to deal out into the drafting pool. So in a three-player game, it's going to be two cards per player plus one, so we'll deal out seven. And you just deal them from the top of the deck onto their uh, gray side here. I'll draft first since I'm the first player. Every time uh, my drafting turn comes, I can choose one of the cards that's out in the pool, and then I can either take it for my collection or I can sell it for gold. So uh, let's assume here that I am going to uh, draft one of these plates. I think that that's a strategy that might work for me. The player to my left maybe is going to choose one of these teapots. The player to my right, uh, let's say, is going to choose one of these plates. So now that we've gone all the way around the table, the last player to draft gets a second choice. That's a snake drafting mechanic. So perhaps they are going to choose another plate since pairs of plates are good. And then we're gonna go clockwise around the table. So this player, um, I think maybe wants to remove this plate from the pool. They don't want to let me have it because then I'm going to have a pair and that's going to be worth points. So they can actually uh, take this. Now it's not particularly useful to this player, so perhaps they are going to sell it in order to get the gold, which is going to bring their gold stockpile up to three, and that's going to be useful to them uh, in a minute. Um, I'm going to take this bowl, I think. So that's going to leave this teapot in the middle of the table. Once we've all drafted twice, then we are going to observe the two cards that are left. So this is one of the cards that's left, and then this card that's at the top of the deck is also going to be relevant. All of the pottery that matches these two cards breaks at this time. So all of the teapots currently in play break, and all of the bowls that are currently in play break. That means, uh, as you remember, that it's as though those do not exist. They don't contribute points, and they don't help for sets or pairs or combinations or things like that. After things have broken, every player gets a chance to repair things. So this is where this player is looking very smart, because they set themselves up to be able to repair this teapot. It costs two to repair, because that's the number of uh, gold ingots that you can see on the card. They've got three, because they sold that plate. So this player can just spend these two in order to repair this teapot. So now it's back into play, and now it's worth more than it ever was before. I uh, did not set myself up to have gold, so I can't repair this bowl. It has a cost of two to repair, so I'm gonna have to hope that later on in the game I can sell some things in order to get some gold and repair this later on. But right now, this is not helping me very much. 
Once everybody has had a chance to repair things, we clear this card out. That's just going to leave the game. And then we uh, move the first player token to the left. And then we would just deal out another set from the top. So let me show you how scoring might work at the end of the game. So let's say that this is the, these are the cards that I have managed to draft over the course of the game. Let me just walk you through how these score. So this serving tray is super straightforward. That's worth two points. It can't break. I locked in those points uh, at the moment that I drafted that thing. Cups are also straightforward. They pair with saucers to get multipliers. So assuming that these are my cups and saucers, this is gonna be worth three points for the mass of them. This saucer is not doing any work, A, because it's broken, and B, because I don't have a cup to pair it with. Uh, the cup is worth one base. This repaired saucer multiplies the cup that it's paired with by three. So that's three points. Uh, my running total is five. Moving on to the plates. Plates are worth six for a pair, so these two are working together to get six. This plate uh, does not have a plate to pair with because this is broken and broken things do not help you at all. This one is going to be worth two points because it's repaired. When a plate is repaired, it's two points on top of whatever else that it might be worth. So, six for these plus two for this is eight total. That makes my running total uh, 13. Moving on to the bowls. Each bowl is worth the number of bowls that you have. Since I've got three bowls, each one of them is worth three for a total of nine. A repaired bowl is worth one more point over whatever it might otherwise have been worth. So my bowls together are worth 10. That brings my running total up to 23. Uh, moving on to the teapots, each teapot is worth the value that's based on how many uh, other pottery cards you have that matches its value. So for this one, I'm going to count up the number of uh, modern patterns that I've got. So this one is worth one for itself, two, three, four. So this one is going to be worth four total. Now this one that's repaired is going to be worth two times the number of matching patterns that it's got. So two for itself, plus two more for this one. Although these two match, they are broken and so they can't contribute. So it's gonna be four points for this one and four points for this one. Eight for teapots total. That's gonna to bring the total for this entire collection of pottery up to 31 points. So that would be my score for the end of the game.